One of the first things that people think about when they think the Burning Crusade are attunements. In vanilla, most of the raids had some sort of attuning process. The most intense being the Anixia attunement chain, where you have to globe trot across the world, killing dragons and collecting blood, escorting prisoners, and others were as simple as just paying your way in as if it were an amusement park. The Burning Crusade takes it to another level, however, and considering I'm sort of on a guide streak here with my class, race, and profession picking guides, I figured it might be prudent to also cover attunements. So this video will include every single attunement, mainly for guide purposes. If you look at this chart and see it as a bit daunting, I don't blame you. The first thing we need to do is to familiarize ourselves with the phases for the Burning Crusade Classic. In the original release, everything up to and including High Gel, players could technically enter on launch. It's just that to get to the higher level raids, you needed to complete some quests that required bosses or chains from the previous level raids. And it wasn't until several months that guilds actually progressed to the quote endgame raids due to everyone's more limited knowledge and skill ceiling at the time. But as Vanilla Classic has shown, without restrictions, players can and will blow through these raids at ludicrous speeds. So Blizzard saw it appropriate to lock many of them in the associated quest lines until they release in their appropriate phases. The game will launch in Phase 1 with Karazhan, Grills, and Mctheridon Zlers unlocked. And then Phase 2 is your Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep. Phase 3 is Hyjal and Black Temple. Phase 4 is Elaman. And lastly for Phase 5, Sunbolt Plateau. All of these but Grills Lair, Mctheridon's Lair, Zalaman, and Sunwell Plateau do require an attunement to enter. Blizzard did come out and say that you will be able to progress to the attunements before the raids are actually released. The example they used is Killing Alar, which is required for part of the Black Temple attunement. You can do this prior to the Black Temple's release, which again is Phase 3. They also said that the attunements will eventually be nerfed, mirroring how they were handled in the original release. So just a short history lesson here. The Serpent Shrine and Tempest Keep attunements were hot fixed out shortly after Black Temple's release, so you can probably expect the same sometime after Phase 3, I'd imagine. Karazhan, Hyjal, and Black Temple did require attunement until Sunwell was out, so probably at Phase 5 we'll see the same. And for the Hyjal attunement, the vials that you loot from Bash and Kael'thas got changed from only a few dropping per kill to one dropping for anyone who had the quest. This was a 2.1 change, which should translate to Phase 3. Ultimately, it is up to Blizzard on when they decide to change all of this stuff. They have been wrong before, so it's something I'd advise that you just look up if you're watching this video mid or late expansion. So, I figure the best way to do this is to just start where everyone is naturally going to start, and that's with leveling. Through this attuning process, you'll need to visit several heroic dungeons, and to do so, you need to be keyed for them which you can buy at the revered reputation with the five dungeon hubs in the game. I'll get into this more thoroughly later on, but for Hellfire Citadel, this is Honor Hold for the Alliance and Thralmar for the Horde. For Coilfang Reservoir, this is Cenarian Expedition. Lower City is tied to the Aukendun hub. The Keepers of Time is the reputation for the Caverns of Time dungeons. And the Shatar is the reputation for the Tempest Keep hub. The quartermasters where you buy the actual keys are found in the respective zones where the hubs are found and are listed here for your convenience. I'll also have them linked in the description if you have trouble finding them. You get reputation for these hubs by completing quests in the respective zones or through dungeons. The lower level dungeons listed here give you reputation until the honored level and the higher level ones give you reputation until exalted. The Shatar is kind of tricky because there aren't a whole lot of quests for them and the dungeons require flying to enter, so really it's something that most people save for level 70. So your strategy will really depend on what type of player you are, but in general the dungeons are going to give you better reputation for the amount of experience that you receive, and many people will just grind out dungeons for the majority of their leveling from 58 to 70. If you do this, you can knock out two birds with one stone and have a big head start on the attunement process. Whereas with the questing round, by the time you hit 70, you will have to backtrack and run dungeons anyways to reach that revered level. The only downside is that it makes for a pretty stale leveling experience, at least in my opinion, so that's where the balance comes in. If you maybe want to do a mix, which is what I plan on doing, I would suggest doing the dungeons first because, as mentioned, the lower level ones in each hub give reputation up to the honored level. So to maximize it, get it to honored with dungeons, 
and then save the quest for after, and she'll save herself a lot of time at 70 trying to attune for all these heroic modes, and at the same time you actually get to go out in the world and do some quests. That's my preferred style at least. In my opinion, there's no right nor wrong way to do it. Just do what you think will be more fun for you, since after all, that's why you're playing the game in the first place, or at least I hope. Some people have more fun questing and exploring the new zones, and some people find it more fun to do things efficiently. But I digress, um, starting with the actual attunement chain, level 68 is when you can start the Karazhan portion of the attunement, and I definitely recommend you doing it then because you may as well get some XP while you're attuning, right? No sense in saving this particular part for 70. If you really want to stay on top of things, you can head on over to the Caverns of Time at level 66 and work on unlocking the Black Morass dungeon as you'll need it later on. I'll go over that when we get to that part of the chain though. So, located in the southern Deadwind Past and Eastern Kingdoms is Karazhan. At the base of the tower you'll find an NPC named Archmage Altris, who gives you a quest to take some well readings in the cellars and loot some quest items from the mobs guarding them. On this note, from this point forward, I won't go into extreme detail on the soloable quests. One is because the video would be two hours long. Two is because they're pretty self-explanatory. Kill these, go here, go there. I think if you have a pair of eyeballs, you should be fine. And three is to avoid spoiling things too much, because the whole attuning process is pretty cool, and I think it would be doing it a disservice to dissect it with extreme detail. I want to at least leave some of that discovery for you. But if you follow these quests until you get sent to Khadgar in Dalaran, he'll task you with collecting the key fragments to enter Karazhan. You'll be visiting some dungeons for these, and you can do all of the quests on normal or heroic mode. If you're 68, of course you'll be doing normal. The first one is held within the Shadow Labs dungeon in Akandun. It's the southernmost dungeon, but you'll find that you need a key to enter. In the original game, you could just commit Sudoku and run past the gate in ghost form, but this is fixed for the re-release. You can't go through the door unless your body is already inside the instance. You can, however, just have a rogue with 350 lockpicking open it. If you don't have one though, lucky for you, king for the Shadow Labs is very simple. You just need to run the Sethic Halls dungeon, which is the one to the east. In the final boss's room, there'll be a chest that contains the Shadow Lab key. Note that in the beta, only one person can loot this. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but if it is, make sure that you roll it out. So, you now have access to the Shadow Labs, and at the end, in Murmur's area, you'll find this phylactery type device. If you have the quest, you can click on it to summon an elemental who will drop the first key fragment. It is elite, so make sure that you have your groupmates help you. And returning to Khadgar, he'll give you a quest for the second and third fragments in one, which are held in the Steam Vaults dungeon in Coilfang, and the Architrize dungeon in the Tempest Keep. Steam Vaults is rather straightforward, no key needed for this. The phylactery is hidden inside the water pool in the middle of the dungeon. Just jump in right here and you'll find it at the bottom, and kill the elemental and loot your fragment. The Architrize requires a bit more work though. This is the uppermost dungeon in the Tempest Keep, which will require flying training to get. You cannot summon up here, at least as of the beta, so the actual dungeon requires level 70, but you can start the chain to key for it at 67. So again, something I recommend doing right away so you can get some experience while you're at it. The actual dungeon has a gate blocking it, just like Shadow Labs. And just like Shadow Labs, if you have a rogue, you can just have him or her open the door, requiring 350 lockpicking. But if you don't have one, at least one person in your group will have to do the key quest chain. To do so, head to the Area 52 and the Nether Storm and find this ethereal, Nether Stalker Cage. He'll send you on a chain of soloable quests where you collect insignias, kill named enemies, survey some spots, and the finale will require you to kill an elite dreadlord, which is intended to be a group quest. It is soloable by some classes. Here I am soloing it as a warlock, but Imagine if you're a warrior or something, you'll want to bring some friends. So you want to follow this chain until you get the quest, How to Break into the Architrez, which requires you to clear through the other two dungeons in the Tempest Keep, and that's the Mechanar and the Botanica. Just like the Architrez, these do require flying to get to, and you can't summon to them. The final bosses of each of these dungeons drop your key fragments, you turn them in in Shatrath, and you get your Architrez key, and finally you can get the final fragment for the Garazan key. Specifically, the key is located in this big room with all of the void walkers. It's to your immediate right as you enter the room. But that's not quite enough. 
Now we need to visit an old friend, Medivh, to restore the key into one whole piece. Unfortunately for us, he died a long time ago, but fortunately for us, we have the power to travel through time, and you can find him in the Black Morass dungeon, which is located in the Caverns of Time. But to get into the Black Morass, you guessed it, you have to get attuned. And unlike the previous dungeons, rogues can't bail you out. Everyone in the party has to do this. A good thing though is that, as mentioned earlier, you can do this part as early as level 66. So something I do recommend you take care of as you're leveling if you want to knock out two birds with one stone. So head on over to the Caverns of Time, which is located right here in Tenaris in Kalimdor. There is a teleport straight there if you talk to Zephyr, who's located in the Barn Shatrath right here on the map. This might not be in at phase 1 though, as it was originally added pretty late into the game in the original run. Regardless, reach it, talk to the drake outside and grab his quest to be sent down into the lair, and you'll start the dreaded tour portion of this quest. This quest is rather infamous among players because you have to take a tour that takes several minutes, you'll get spammed with whispers, and on PvP servers you're on the risk of being killed. And trust me, this spot is going to be camped like crazy, especially if you're on Fair Lena. A tip is that you don't actually have to follow the custodian. You can just AFK right here where you pick up the quest and grab a beer or something and come back to a quest completion. And I did do some testing. If you do get killed after starting the quest, as long as you resurrect right when the custodian returns, you will still get credit for quest completion, so there's a tip for those on a PvP server. But once you complete it, you'll be sent to the Escape from Durnhold dungeon. Turn your quest in and accept the one to light buildings on fire. In these barracks will be clickable barrels and you want to set all five ablaze to complete the quest. Then you kill the boss, progress into the castle until you find Thrall in the sex dungeon. And here we have another escort quest so proceed with caution and make sure that everyone turns it in before you start it. This particular escort is a little more forgiving than the standard that you're used to as you start the actual escort through a dialogue option, not by accepting the next part. So. Everyone can turn in and then accept the next part, which is called Escape from Durnhold. So just make sure that everyone is on this part by checking your quest log, and then tell Thrall that you're ready when everyone does have it. This part can be kind of tricky, as Thrall is full zug and will straight up sprint into elite groups of enemies with no regard to his or your safety. You just have to keep up with them, really. The best advice I can give is to don't be afraid to let him tank, as he has a ton of health. You don't need to race him to the enemies. He can hold his own for a bit, so get some sips before you save his finely toned green butt. From there, complete the dungeon as normal, beat the final boss, turn into the blood elf, and then get the follow up quest, and you're now attuned to the black morass. And your goal is to just complete it so you can talk to Medivh. This dungeon works a bit differently, it's like tower defense with your party as the towers. Portals will continuously open up and send enemies to kill Medivh, and it's your goal to keep him alive. Every sixth wave is a boss enemy, with three bosses total, and after finishing, talk to Medivh and he'll put together your key, and congratulations because you can now enter the Karazhan raid. You can now fight every boss, except for the optional one, which is Nightbane, using the term optional lightly there because he is actually required for the Serpent Shrine attunement. So how do you actually summon him? Well, you can summon him on the outer balcony area, right next to the back entrance, to summon him though, at least one person in your raid will need an item called the Blackened Urn, which you get at the end of a lengthy quest chain. To start it, you need Honored with the Violet Eye Faction, which you get by simply killing enemies in Karazhan. By now, you may have heard about the Week 1 Nightbane strategy. If you don't kill the bosses in Karazhan, you can continuously respawn the trash and farm them to get your reputation up. Just make sure that you don't kill the Shade of Aran, as you'll need him in the process of unlocking Nightbane. So once you get honored, head back to Archmage Altaris outside the raid, and he'll give you the start of the chain, Medivh's Journal, which requires you to speak to a dude named Ravian, whom you can find in the giant room right after Curator. You'll be sent to a couple of NPCs nearby in the same room. You'll get sent to bring back Medivh's Journal from the Shade of Varan, then to witness an RP event on the balcony I talked about earlier where you summon Nightbane, and you'll go outside and dig up a bone, bring that back to Altaris, who then sends you to Kelana Lathred and Netherstorm right here on the map. She'll ask you to retrieve two bucks, one from the Dark Weaver Sith, who's the first boss in the Sethic Halls dungeon, and another one from Grand Warlock Nether Curse, who's the first boss of the Shattered Halls dungeon. Both of these must be done in heroic mode, so as described earlier, 
you'll have to grind out the revered reputation with the respective factions. In this case, Lower City and Honor Hold for the Alliance and Thralmar for the Horde. Returning those to Kalina will give you the Blackened Urn, which you can then use to summon Nightbane. And again, only one person needs to do this. There is a special note for the Shattered Halls. This also has an external gate blocking it, which needs a special key or a rogue with 350 lockpicking. To get the key, you follow a pretty short chain, head on over to the Shadow Moon Valley zone, right outside the Black Temple right here in the map, and find a mob named Smith Gorlunk. He'll drop a quest starter that you turn in in Hellfire. The follow-up requires some trade materials, and after that, you'll have to take down a patrolling Fell Reaver in the same zone to forge a key that opens the Shattered Hall's gate. The Fell Reaver is a group quest, so it's recommended that you bring four friends. So, that's every dungeon and Karazhan covered. Next, we'll cover Raid 1 of 2, released in Phase 2, and that's the Serpent Shrine Cavern. To start it, you need to enter the Slate Pens on Heroic Mode. About halfway through, after doing that big drop down, at the end of that room will be a caged prisoner, Scarthus the Heretic. He'll ask for two items, the Earthen Signet and the Blazing Signet. The Blazing Signet you get from Nightbane, as described earlier. So this is something that you can pick up as soon as you unlock the Coil Fang Heroics, so I do advise you do that before you do your Karazhan run. As for the Earthen Signet, you get this from Gruul the Dragon Killer, who's the second and final boss of the Gruul's Laird 25 Man Raid, which can be found right here in the Blades Edge Mountains. No attunement is required for this one, so join 24 guildmates and just zone in and get her done. Turn them back into Scarthus and you'll be attuned for the Serpent Shrine Cavern. And next we have the second raid of phase 2, and that's the Tempest Keep. To attune to this one, you first have to complete the Cypher of Damnation quest chain, which is a very long quest chain started in the Shadow Moon Valley zone from these Earthmender NPCs for Horde and Alliance. It's quite time consuming, comprised mostly of soloable quests that are all pretty straightforward. Again, I won't go over each and every one for the sake of video length and not completely spoiling it. The finale quests do require a group though, specifically for an NPC named Rural the Darkener and Siruk the Fire Lord, so you'll need to find some friends for that part. Completing that entire chain unlocks a new quest from Khadgar and Chatrath called the Tempest Key, which leads to the Naru Trials. For the Trial of Strength, you need to go to the Steam Vault and loot a trident off the final boss there, Warlord Calithresh. You also need to loot the Essence of Murmur, who's the final boss of the Shadow Labyrinth dungeon. And the Tenacity Trial requires you to go to the Architraz dungeon on Heroic Mode and kill the final boss while keeping Millhouse Mana Storm alive. You'll be summoned during the final boss gauntlet and you simply can't let him die. And it's pretty unforgiving if you fail, as you'll have to wait for the next lockout to try again. The Trial of Mercy requires you to go into the Shattered Hulse Heroic and reach the Executioner before he executes all the prisoners, which is 55 minutes. But this timer only starts after the first boss, and boy howdy was it a daunting task back then. I do plan on making Heroic Guides for each and every dungeon, so if you find yourself having trouble with this part, or any of these Heroics for that matter, check out the channel and you might find a guide for it. Something that I want to note though, and a big time saver that a lot of people trip up on, is this big hallway. You don't need to kill these sparring orcs on the sides, you can just walk right past them. The Executioner himself is the guy right after Kargoth, the final boss, and it's basically a callback to the timed Stratholm run that you needed for your tier 0.5 dungeon set if you ever did that. And just like the Tenacity Trial, if you fail, you'll have to wait a day for the lockout to reset, so pretty unforgiving. Turn in all three of these trials to get the final trial, Make Theradon, which requires you to clear the single boss raid, Make Theradon Solaire, which can be found at the bottom of the Hellfire Citadel approaching from the west side. Similar to Gruul's Lair, this particular raid doesn't require an attunement, and I do plan on making full raid guides for them. And turning that in attunes you to the Tempest Keep raid, the Eye. The next raids on our list are High Gel and the Black Temple, which are released in Phase 3. If you're all caught up to this point, the attunement for Hygel is very straightforward. You'll need to have obtained Revered with the Keepers of Time, which is the reputation tied to the Caverns of Time hub. Dernhold Normal gives you rep until honored, and then Black Morass or any of these two on Heroic to Exalted. And once you're Revered, find Sura Dormi inside the Caverns of Time for the Vial of Eternity quest. This requires you to obtain Kale's Vial Remnant from Kalthas Sunstrider, the final boss of the Eye in the Tempest Keep and Vash's Vile Remnant from Lady Vash, the final boss of the Serpent Shrine Cavern. It's pretty straightforward, which feels weird to say because back then, this was quite the task, I'll tell you what. 
especially Kael'thas, who went unkilled by like 99% of the guilds until he got hit by a nerf bat. But again, if you've been following this guide, you should be attuned to both of those, and if not, you'll have to backtrack in the video. As mentioned, these only dropped a few at a time until the Black Temple patch, so if you're watching this prior to Phase 3, it might take you multiple clears to get your entire raid attuned. But turning both of them in attunes you to Mount Hyjal. And lastly, we have Illidan's Fortress and Cancelled Warlords of Draenor City, the Black Temple. The starting location for the attunement chain depends on what Shatrath faction you chose. If you're Aldor, you talk to the Anchorite Sela right here in the Shadow Moon Valley. And if you're Scryer, you start with Arcanist Thelis, located right here on the map. Similar to the Cypher of Damnation questline, I won't cover all of the soloable stuff. I'll leave a bit for you to discover. Eventually, you'll reach a point in the chain where you need to find an NPC called Udalo inside the Architraz dungeon, or at least his body, which can be found in the room before the final boss. Following the chain will lead to a quest to kill the Shadow Lord Death Whale, found right here in the Shadow Moon Valley. He is an elite, so I recommend that you bring a group, and you'll then be sent to an NPC located inside the Serpent Shrine Cavern Raid. Specifically, you'll find him behind the Fathom Lord Carathress. So following the theme of all of these attunements, you'll require the attunement of the previous raid tier. You'll then be sent back to the Tempest Keep to slay the Phoenix Alar while wearing the Ash Tongue Call Transmog, and following that, you'll have to defeat the first boss of Mount Hyjal, Rage Winterchill, and loot his phylactery. And from there you do some soloable quests until you finally construct the epic Medallion of Karabor Amulet, which doubles as a key to the Black Temple. Much like how the Drakefire Amulet served as the Onyxia key. And that's it! The following raids, Suleiman and Sunwall Plateau, are freebies, no attunement required. At this point, Blizzard caved in to the gamer dads with 47 kids and 24 seconds a week to play the game, and the attunements would see a big nerf, or they were even removed altogether in patch 2.4. This concludes the guide segment of this video, but before signing off here, I do want to point you towards a handy add-on called the Tune, which will help you keep track of all of this stuff so you don't need to keep coming back to this video and listening to my monotone yet soothing and pleasant to listen to voice. You'll get a mini map button, and either for vanilla or BC, you'll have a really nice interface where you can keep track of character by character where you are in the chain. It's really nicely done, and I suggest it to everyone. I'll have a link in the description. But anyways, thanks as always for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.